Uh, Standard Missile 6 actually is a premier uh, multi-mission uh, missile capability. It delivers uh, extended AAW capability, which engages uh, air-breathing threats, cruise missile threats, uh, as well as adding uh, sea-based terminal capability and anti-surface warfare capability. So in one missile, it's delivering uh, and addressing three critical missions for the U.S. Navy. From the warfighter's perspective, they've got a finite number of cells or, or uh, silos where they can place uh, the, the capabilities to defend uh, the ship, to defend the fleet. And so with the Standard Missile 6, it allows you to, it allows the, the warfighter to, uh, to leverage the capability both for the, as I mentioned, the air breathing threats, cruise missile threats, as well as uh, providing a sea-based terminal uh, engagement capability for incoming ballistic missiles. So it provides much greater flexibility to the warfighter to address uh, multi-missions, as well as provide a, a much greater uh, operating uh, capability, operating range capability. Currently, Standard Missile 6 is, uh, is in service with the U.S. Navy only. Only there's some interest expressed uh, from international uh, uh, customers. I can't get into the details of, of the individual customers, but um, it, it absolutely, as, as it gets more uh, in-service experience with the U.S. Navy, uh, as we work together with the U.S. government uh, to address those international opportunities, we, we believe that there's uh, tremendous opportunities for, for collaboration uh, going forward with SM-6. It's a family of missiles. We've evolved from SM-1 to SM-2. Uh, adding a booster to uh, the SM-2 uh, missile and adding other capabilities which we've developed as SM-6 and then also SM-3. SM-3 uh, is part of the standard missile family and, and what's important is, is that it provides layer defensive capability uh, for ballistic missile defense. So I, I, I led off with SM-6 providing that, that endo-atmosphere uh, lower tier capability, uh, three missions and one missile. With SM-3, it adds a layer of defense in the exo-atmosphere. It, it actually engages the threats, the incoming ballistic missiles, uh, above the atmosphere. And it does that with what we call a kinetic warhead or a kill vehicle, and it's really hitting a bullet with a bullet. The value with an SM-3 uh, engaging an incoming uh, ballistic missile in space uh, uh, with a hit-to-kill capability, it, it essentially, with the kinetic uh, energy of, of that engagement completely obliterates the threat before it can even come down into the atmosphere. So if you think of it um, in terms of the regional uh, defensive capability, not point defense, but really protecting populations, uh, broad population centers, uh, you need that engagement in the upper atmosphere uh, to, to, uh, to basically neutralize the threat and not have that come down uh, into the atmosphere. Going from the SM3 1A, 1B family uh, up into the SM3 2A, um, we, it's basically a, a larger diameter missile. Uh, what that provides is increased range, uh, and it also provides the engagement range to, to provide a much greater defended area. That defended area translates to battle space for uh, the U.S. Navy to engage and protect the fleet. Uh, in the land-based configuration, as, as deployed now in Aegis Ashore in Romania, uh, and, and uh, Aegis Ashore in Poland will come online in the latter part of uh, 2018 with a standard missile 3-2A. That provides much greater defended area across Europe as part of the European phased adaptive approach. So what uh, both the standard missile 3 and standard missile 6 says is really a culmination and brings together the, the technology uh, and, and the engineering talent that we have uh, working together with our customer to, uh, to develop and adapt uh, state-of-the-art capability to address the advancing threats.